Woo. All right, y'all remember this one? This was in the Tom Sellers coop. We uh, ended up popping it. Uh, let's see, we shifted between reverse and second on the drag strip at Pine Tree Jamboree. Pop the cluster. All right, so we're working on the Pomona panel now, you know. Today is Tuesday. We leave, uh, let's see, today's Tuesday the 17th. We leave on the 25th, which is eight days away. I noticed driving the Pomona panel that the 36 Trans had a little bit of some kind of a weird clickety-click noise in the third gear while driving it, so <laughs> I figure I've got the rear end, I'm fixing to swap out, put the 325 gear rear end in it. Best time to swap out the trans is right now because it's gonna be, rear end's gonna be out, trans is gonna be exposed where I can get to it. So I might as well just yank her out of there. So I was going to take a, a rebuilt side shift that I bought at a swap meet and transfer it into uh, a top loader case. I decided that if I got into that transmission and it wasn't rebuilt and I needed parts, then that was gonna slow me down and mess me completely up. This one I know is a good trans. It was rebuilt when I, when I bought it and I had it in the coupe, ran perfect. It was great. When I took it to the drag strip, we popped the cluster. We knocked some teeth off the cluster so it looks like some of the north side of Muskogee girls. So what my plan is, is to take it apart and swap out. I know all the, all the stuff is good. The, the bearings are good in it. They've all been replaced. Thinking I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and take it apart, pull out the lower cluster gear, put everything back together. And this would be the easiest and the best solution since I only have eight days. It should work, theoretically. So we're gonna pull it apart. I don't know if it's got its oils in it. I need to probably pull the top here and look. I don't know what that was. Okay, let's pull this top here. I've already had it off once. So we'll get it. I didn't have a lock wash washer in it. Neither does all the rest. Oh. Yep, it's been off. Okay, we do have it drained. Oh, we got huh. We got a good, a good mess in here. When I remembered correctly, the lower cluster was popped, and it definitely is popped, but so is, I believe that's the uh, first gear. So we'll definitely need to, let's see. Oh yeah, she's locked up right now. Everything looks new in here, except that one gear is just junk. Let's get you guys down here to look at it. There you go. So you can see that one right there got slammed, and it's, it's not turning now because the bottom, you can probably see it down in there. It's got some summer teeth too, and I can see on the top right back in there, that there's one missing so we're gonna pull this apart replace that gear we're gonna look at all the other stuff I think everything else was good in it because it had been completely rebuilt so we'll we'll swap out that lower cluster we'll swap that gear out and we'll put it all back together so we'll pull this cover off here off the main shaft get that off let's move this I think we're gonna be able to use this shaft, I think, hopefully, we'll see. Um, this in, uh, mount here will end up coming off. We'll pull that nut off that holds the, 
the uh, U-joint and we'll get this all cleaned up. We're going to end up paint, paint it black anyway. So let's get this thing pulled apart and let's see what we got here. Everything seems pretty straightforward. And I'll be honest, I've never done this before, but I did stay last night at a Holiday Inn Express. We'll see how that works for us. No, actually, I ended up watching, uh, you guys probably know Zach from Wired Customs. I watched several of his videos taking stuff apart and putting it back together, so that really helps. So thanks, Zach. Shout out. If you don't watch Zach, look up Wired Customs on YouTube. He does some really great stuff, a lot of how-tos and a lot of stuff it, that's hard to understand without a video. You can see it on Zach's YouTube. So big thanks to Zach for doing all the videos. I'm gonna, uh, actually I'm gonna put these on this paper so that I have them. I don't wanna keep, keep the dirt off of them. Now this has already been off one time and I did get a new gasket set, so. Good. There's the mount. We don't need that. We got a different one. And she's already trying to come out. Yeah. We need to swap this around so there's the, the rear mounts off. Let's get this other one. There's the spring for the bearing. I can see that they, when they rebuilt it, they gooped up the shafts that go all the way through the case to keep them from leaking. And it did not leak, which is good. So let's see if we can get that one. I might need to tap that one. This is the candlestick. up good it's got a good seal on it uh, see here. there we go I can hear it just tap right on the, right on the end of that candlestick ah, there we go yeah they gooped her up good that's got a brand new seal in it so that's good we'll get that there now we gotta pull some retainer springs out in order to get some of this stuff apart. Take a picture of that. That way I have it and I know exactly how it goes back and forth together. All right, so the reverse gear's gotta come out first. Or it's gonna drop down in there anyway. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna turn this over a little bit. Hopefully we won't lose any fluid. It's still got quite a bit. We need to pull this pin here that connects, it goes all the way through from here to here, connects these two shafts. So we gotta pull that. Uh, I'm gonna have to get a block of wood or something. I really don't want to tilt it all the way up on its end because I know that oil that's in there will start dumping out. Hopefully we're good there. Anyway, we've got to pull that cotter pin and we'll pull that pin out of there. Jack that one up. See if we can get her. There we go. There we go. Got that 
cotter pin out. And we'll just tap that sucker out. It's got some jank on it though. Paint looks like. I'm gonna keep it from going through that hole. Okay, we're not leaking any oil, so that's good. Let's see if we can. Straight on out, baby. Man, they put the goop all in that pen. We'll wipe the wheel that before we get it put back. Man, I don't know what that stuff is. But it didn't leak oil there, so that's good. Okay. Now that the pen's out, we can tap that. Tap the reverse shaft there. Lightly tapping it, I got a 3 8 extension. That's going to allow the reverse gear to drop down in the bottom of the case. Almost there. Still going. And it's still going. There it went. Dropped right down in there. Now, well, let's just go ahead and tap her on out. And then that gear will just sit down in there, as a matter of fact. So I think I can get it with that one. the pitch change. There it went. So that shaft is down the bottom now and the gears loose which is good. That's what we needed. Man that sure makes a big difference. Let's see if we can get that out. Might be able to get it out with my magnet here. Oop. There we go. Ho, 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 ho. There it is. There's the reverse shaft. You can see the little hole. That's the pin I just knocked out, obviously. So, let's figure out how to get that lock ring off. I don't have the correct pliers, but I think I have something that I can get in there and do it with. I need to pull these uh, snap rings off and we'll get this gasket off here so it doesn't get in the way and fall in there. Don't need any trash in there. I need to get this rear snap ring off, this front snap ring off, and I don't have the correct pliers for it, so I'm gonna try to figure something out here, if I can. I'm gonna use a hook, a small hook, and try to, let's see, that'll come out a little bit, there we go. Try to get these with my needle nose. It's going to be really hard because I really need the the correct the correct uh, pliers for it, and I don't have them. So, oh, got part of it. Well, that's good because I think we can get it now. Okay, here we go. There's that one. Now it's still in good shape, so that's good. We got that one off there. Now we can take that. So this, you got your input shaft, your output shaft, and they're kind of, for lack of better terms, are kind of like that in there. Not lack of better terms, but as a dog hand diagram, they're in there like this. So there's bearings in the end of this input shaft. There's also bearings, uh, needle bearings, kind of a, kind of like the early Ford rear uh, axle bearings are kind of a sleeve. There's two in this one and one in that one and it has to come apart like that and one has to come out that way and one has to come out this way so 
Now that we got that one out, we can work on that front one. Really, I only need to take that snap ring off to get that bearing off, and that bearing doesn't need to come off because everything else looks good in there. So what I need to do is I need to go ahead and knock that lower shaft that's holding that lower cluster up and connect it to, to the input shaft. So let me see if I can tap that out of there. See if we can get it going. Felt like it hit a hard spot, which it shouldn't have. And that gear is messed up bad. Both of those gears are messed up bad. Okay, so let's see if we can tap it some more. Hmm, it's not wanting to go any further than that. Might have to get a bigger punch here. There it goes. You can see right here that I've got the, let's see, let me get it around there maybe. You see that shaft starting to come out right there, so let's go ahead and get, let's see if we can get that pin back in there. I'm gonna use that as a handle. Maybe, maybe. No, it's just, man, I think they put so much stuff on it in there that you just can't get it. You can't get a hold of it to get it to twist. So let's see if we can get that to tap on out some more. Okay, we're getting there. We're getting there, it's just gonna take a little bit to do it. Let's see if we can, uh, well, let's just keep going, I guess. Just trying to miss that. Don't wanna, don't wanna flare that. Ah, there we go. I didn't wanna flare the opening hole on that. Let's see if we can get that in there now. See if it'll, oh, here we go. Okay, yeah. Yeah, let's work that out. And that's gonna drop the cluster down. Maybe. Can't get in there. Come on, baby, you got it. Oh, there we go. There we go. So you can see the stuff they gooped up on the end of that. We're gonna clean that off. Blue RTV. Who would ever use blue? That's dumb. Okay, that shaft's out. So now the cluster is down in the bottom, which is gonna allow us to pull this apart, I think. There we go. And, okay. I see all the stuff there. We need to get that out of there. I see the bearings in there, so turn that a little bit so you can see now that the the input shaft and the output shaft are now separated so we need to pull these we need to pull these uh, synchros off I'm not sure oh I see it they got goopy old seal all the way up around that so that's going to end up 
we're gonna have to Let's see if I can just manage it. Oh, there we go. So it was sealed up. You can see all there's one of the bearings. Brand new one. You can see the blue stuff all around. That's what was holding it in. It's all in the front of that. Right underneath that candlestick. Yeah, we'll have to clean all that off with the razor blade. Okay, now that that's off, we can start pulling all the stuff off of this. There's a little spacer here, which let me get this. I'm gonna lay these out in order too on my paper. That way I can remember how they go because I've never done it before. And I don't have it memorized yet. So, okay, there we go. Come on, baby, you got it. You got, there you go, girl. There's your little spacer. That is reusable for sure. Uh, let's see if we can get that gear off. Oh, there's another ring there. Okay. Hmm, it's starting to get sideways in there on me now. It's swarming. Get it off the side. There it is. It's down the bottom now. Get my magnet. Get it out of there. There it is. Yeah, it's twisted a little bit, but I think we can reuse it if I don't have another one. So there's the ring right there. That one was holding the end of the uh, clutch fork slide. I think that's what you call it. So now we should be able to pull that off of there. Oh, there it went. Okay. Whoop, there went all the, <laughs> there went all the little keepers there. Oops. Yeah, they went down to the bottom. Awesome, there's one. Use my screwdriver here. I don't want any burrs, but I've got to Just lightly twisted that apart. Let's see, we're we missing one. Yep, that's not one. Come off there. There we go. I got my hand in there now. Oh, there's there's that. There's the little ring. And now we can take that synchro off. And on down the line. Oh yeah, there's the gear right there that's busted. One of them anyway. Oh, oh, oh man, and it's got one tooth missing there, and it's got uh, three missing there. Ugh, that's bad. Okay. Well, we gotta. There we go. I got that little keeper locks in. Let's see if we can get it back. There we go. There's that one. That goes between the. It's a little spacer. It goes between the gears there. Hitting a little pin right there. Huh. Okay. So, how do I get that pin out? It's a little bitty tiny pin in that shaft. I have not seen anything on that. Zach, you missed that part. But we're going to figure it out. So, let's see if we can get the needle nose on it. Maybe slide it out that way. Oh, there it went. Yep. Little bitty tiny pin in there. Don't forget that. That's probably the thing that will keep everything from falling apart. Oh, there's a bug flying. 
flying around. Now we should be able to slide that right out. Yep, there we go. Okay. That gear is in good shape. So we're good there. Output shaft. No problems with the output shaft. Right there's where the little pin was that was holding that on. Anyway, there you go. It was right in there and that was holding it. It was sticking up about eighth inch, so it was holding that gear from coming off. So there we go on that. It's all out. Gosh. All right, get ready, y'all. Okay, there went the reverse gear. And there went a bearing. I want to keep that bearing together. There went the other bearing and the spacer. So I'll show you guys, this is a mess because there's a lot of oil still in there. I didn't realize it. Oh, look at all the teeth missing on that right there. Golly, they just keep going. So this is your main cluster and you've got bearings in here. These little round needle bearings looks like. I don't want them falling out. So I'm gonna stack them up on their ends then there's a spacer in here. We'll stack that up. Let's see if we can get that last one out and right through here. Nope, it has to come out the front. Okay. And there we go. There's the last one. And I see that there's it's missing a needle. So that could potentially be a problem. There's one missing there. Let me go wash this, wash my hands in the parts washer, and then we'll take a look at it a little closer. All right, got that cleaned off so there's no more oil dripping, which is good. And you can see that that thing is pretty freaking bad. So I give a huge shout out to uh, Pine Tree Jamboree that was the cost of going and drag racing the 34 coupe and that didn't didn't end well yeah so we got to find another one i've got a stash of them some gears i got from an estate that i was able to get in and pick so i'm gonna see if i can find another one let's see if that uh there's a little bit of oil down in there let's see if we can find that needle bearing Oh gosh, I can feel all kinds of stuff. I can see the oil is all metallic. <laughs> There's the gears and we'll get those out. Yeah, or the pieces of gears. Oh, there's more. Yeah, awesome. And more. Chunks, lots of chunks. Oh man, shattered chunks. More gears, more chunks, more gears. Golly, it's never ending. Oh, there's the other little keeper there if it goes in that gear. That we'll rinse that off. No needle bearing so far, so I don't know where that one left the chat at, and there's no way for it to really get out of there. That's kind of weird. More chunks, lots of chunks. Look at that, golly. Oh, there it is. There's the needle bearing. Whew, it had an end blow off of it. That's not good. So, you can see the end of that thing blew off. Right, bottom of it's fine. It's just that part blew off and that's what happened. 
He probably got in a bind or something, popped out of there. I still see some assembly lube on, on this, so that tells me that this was pretty much rebuilt before I drag raced it. So let's see if there's any more pieces in there before we toss these. That's a good chunk of lots of pieces. I'm gonna clean this thing out. I'm gonna spray it out with uh, some brake clean. Get that all cleaned up. We'll find the, locate the gears we need. So we're gonna need that gear, that gear right there. And we're gonna need the main cluster. So we'll find those two real quick and then we'll start the assembly. I scrambled around, found another gear. This is the second gear. Not first gear, but second gear. And that's the one I exploded. But if you look at it, you can see some differences there. The synchronizer teeth there on the gear are quite a bit different. Well, I wondered if this one would work, but come to find out, one's a little bit thicker than the other one, thicker this way. So, I wasn't sure what was going on, if I needed a spacer to use this gear or if I could even use this gear. But I ended up looking it up. I sent my buddy Josh over at Pre-War More uh, a comment to see if, in, in a picture to see if he could tell me the difference because I didn't know and I couldn't find anything in the transmission book that I had. So I jumped over on his website and I found out that the one with the thicker um, synchro gears there is a 32 to 39. The one with the narrow ones is 39 to 50. So that one definitely won't work. So I'll, I sent a message over to Mike and asked him if he knew, told him this is the one I needed, told him I needed a 39 to 50, and he actually has one. He's bringing it over, so I'm gonna be able to swap that one out. That one is a good gear, but I just can't use it in here. So we'll save that for another day. Now, cluster gear. I had one. It's not like super terrible, it's got a little surface rust on it, but I'm just gonna clean it up. I'm gonna wire wheel it. All the teeth look good on the gears. It doesn't look really worn too bad. So I'm just gonna clean it up, knock the rust off, grease it down, and we'll swap that one out for that one. So we'll try to get all these to little, I'm not sure what these little tabs are, but we'll try to make sure they're, they will, oh, there we go. Slide down up. There we go. No, maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. Okay, I'm gonna take it back off. Okay, that little spring came out. Awesome. You going, baby? Get it, girl. Oh, no, nope, that didn't like that. Get that spring came out past it. Let's get it back in there. There we go. There we go. Ha ha ha! Now, hopefully, that's in the right direction. go. Tap that down on here. Get in all the slots there. All right, there we go. We got the lock pin on there. That was a pain in the butt. So no curse words were shared though. So that is ready to go back in the case. Now the other part is the input shaft and bearing. Let's pull that out and make sure it's got all the girls there so it looks good we might it's got plenty of oil on it but i think i might go ahead and lube it up anyway because it's going to go slide up on that it's going to slide up on there just like that boom and lock in 
it'll lock in just like that that'll be so we do have this one little spacer here that goes right on that though right there and that's for the bearing so there you go anyway so I didn't take any of this apart off of here because I knew it was just gonna go right back in there so now what we need to do is we need to get the case up here and we need to slide this in and we can lock her in, put this in, lock it in, good to go. All right. First things first, we're gonna get the reverse gear in there. And there's the reverse gear. Oh, shoot, don't chip no teeth. So we can slide that in there. And I didn't have any kind of a washer in there on that. But I'm going to double check real quick. Look at my diagram, see if there's any washers there. All right, the green Bible says no washers. Washers. So we'll tap that until we get it back in there. We've got my little brass drift here. I'm just going to get her started on there. Feel it hit the gear. Yeah, get it. Let's see, we'll use the little pin here like Zach does. We'll get it. We gotta get it up there and get it inside that gear hole. There we go. Ha! Huh. Wasn't that bad once I figured it out where it went. Okay, we'll leave that sticking out just a little bit because we've got to make sure we line up. I'm going to put some grease down in there too on that hole where that shaft goes. Won't hurt it. Won't hurt it none. The greasier the better. Yeah, there we go. Now you can see that reverse gear's moving a little bit, so... We'll tap that in. Yep, it's going in the hole, so we're good. I left it out just a little bit so you can see where it's going to be lined up. It looks like it's lined up perfectly. All right. You're going to want to use a brass drift or a brass hammer like that for some of this stuff so that way you don't mar it. right there so what we did is we got it down on the synchros of first gear there so that we have a little bit more space and I think is that gonna do it come on baby you can do it okay we may have to go on from the other side and that's not gonna work either so let's see here there we go Pushed it a little further on the synchros. And it, and it went right in there. And I'm hitting another gear. But I'm like right there. So come on, girl, you can do it. I just need to get you past that little deal right there. And I can move you around a little better. Come on. Are you there? There we go. Okay, now we can slide that bearing. I'm gonna take the output shaft here and we'll slide that bearing all the way through. There we go. There we go. Now we can get to that lock ring that goes on there. So we'll go ahead and smear some of that down inside there just in case. Won't hurt it a bit. And then we can move the clutch fork out of the way. And that's just going to slide right up on the end of that shaft. Make sure we don't have any extra parts left over. There we go. Now, I slid that in to the locking pin that's on that front bearing. So that's going to keep that from going in too far. Oh, I did forget something. 
sure as heck did. Forgot that little pin right there. So, two steps forward, three steps back. Let's pull that back out. We gotta try to remember where that goes. I forgot all about that. You might have to take that back apart. Eh, dang it. Awesome, so let's go backwards now. I, I know where it goes. I completely forgot about it. I had that stuff kind of laying there in order and I didn't have it correctly. Let's see, this, that goes there. Forgot all about it. I can get it in there. There we go. Now that washer goes back on there and you slide it right on and you see those little cogs that goes right in there and that keeps that washer from spinning there we go now <laughs> backwards oh, yeah so it is let's see we got a little bit of there oh there we go bit of action Jackson right there okay she is good to go now we can put that one on there which I don't know if we can get that on there we might have to uh, do the old screwdriver trick here I don't have the correct pliers for this see wipe my hands off and we might be able to get her done let's see if we can get this thing in here maybe it's gonna it's gonna want to move in and out we don't have the front snout on the candlestick holding the front end so in the back is is gonna want to move the output shaft part is gonna want to come in and out so this snap ring that I'm putting in here that one is going to keep that from going too far and pushing out the front. And then your rear uh, trans mount is also the bearing retainer back here in the back. So it's going to feel a little weird because it, it'll move in and out even though that snap ring's there. But that's just part of it. So there we go snap ring engaged and so so you can see see how that comes in and out no big deal though because that's where your trans mount is going to hold all that together okay now what we can do is we can put that lower shaft in that's the only thing we got left other than the candlestick that goes on the front and some rtv and some paint hey you can see an indention there. That's where your front keeper goes for that front bearing. So we'll pull all that off and get that cleaned up and get it, we'll get it painted and get it ready to go. But for right now, I'm going to put a bolt in there to hold that front bearing in to keep that from coming out should these are not blind holes in this front so you're going to want to put some kind of a um, thread sealer on the candlestick because those just go right into the opening along with the ones back here that hold the trans mount in okay so we got the support ring in and you see that or the click ring in there I need to get this shaft now what I've got to do is I'm gonna to have to reach down in there and move some stuff around. Okay, let's see a way, I think. I got my hand in there holding it. There we go. Ha 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 ha, got it. Okay, try to get my hand in there to hold that. 
And then we'll go ahead and slide this gear back in there. Or this uh, shaft, maybe. still be able to see it if we can see if we can just get this to, there we go oh there it comes I can feel it pushing all the grease out the and that one's actually pretty good. That one's really good. I'll grab the razor blade and see if I can get that stuff off there. It's all over that right there too. So what we've got to do is we've got a hole there and a hole here. And we've got to line those up. And that one actually is pretty good. We just need to turn this one a little bit. There we go. That way, when we get it down in there, we can tap it right straight through. So let me go ahead and tap that one in. Looks like that's pretty darn close. Got it started. There we go. Looks like it was going at an angle there a little bit. Okay, that one's going there we go just tap that one in looks like it might need a little bit more just a little bitty bit That was it. There it is. I think what I'll do is I'll go ahead and silicone that up i'll primer this thing and i'll get it painted and ready to go we need to get the drain plugs in it um we need to get the throw out bearing which i have a new one for that i'll get all that hooked up we need to put the snout back on still so we can get that all done but man that's looking great this one's going in the pomona panel i hastily threw a 36 trans in there out of the stash i just grabbed one i was like ah this one looks pretty good it looked the best it was painted about right it went in all the gears but what i didn't realize is that when you let off the gas with that transmission if you're in a second gear it kicks it out of second gear and also 36 doesn't have the synchros so you can't downshift so needless to say that one's coming out because the rear end is coming out because we're putting the 354 gears in it. So that one's coming out. So I thought, hey, right now is a good time to change this transmission. And with this one just needing those two gears, the cluster and that uh, second gear, I was like, man, I got nothing to lose. This one was already rebuilt at one time. So I'm going to go ahead and finish cleaning it up and reassemble it and paint it up so we can swap it out. And then, so the Pomona panel won't ever have to be gotten into. This is good to go. The rear end is a 354. That's perfect. The flathead runs great. The only thing we'll need to do is put gas in it and go cruising. So that's the plan. That's why I'm putting this one back together right now, right before we go. So that I have a good 39 transmission in it. 
got the candlestick or the front bearing retainer cleaned up. It's nice and clean now. Had to wire brush that thing. This is the gasket kit you're going to use. Let's see if we got a reflection on that. Best gasket, 1001. It's going to have all the gaskets. So it's going to have the gasket for the shift tire, this front bearing retainer, the rear mount, and it's going to also have the torque tube seal or for the uh, the pivot on the on the what do you call it? The pivot ball on the torque tube and then it's going to have side shift and it's going to also have the um, clamshell seals there so it has everything you need there here we go all right make sure you put the drain towards the bottom where it goes we'll drop that one on there slide that right on there There we go. There we go. And I'm, while I'm in here, I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit more of that black RV RTV on around that shaft where they had the blue. I'm going to go ahead and squeeze some on here if I can get it. Break clean. There we go. There we are. That stuff cleans up. Yeah. Now I still got some on my fingers, so I'm gonna go ahead and just put that in there. All right, guys. Got her all back together, and then realized that I had first gear on backwards so the rear fork wouldn't work on the daggum shift tower so apart it came we pulled off the front bearing cover i put some different bolts in there because the other ones were kind of nasty looking so we've got that back on there got it all back together and got that little bolt and washer holding that rear bearing in for now until i get the until i get the uh trans mount on there so there's the old gears they were busted Anyway, that's it. We got to get back on this. We're putting this in the panel truck. We're fixing to back it out, turn it around. We're doing the rear end. And while we're doing it, we're going to go ahead and swap out this transmission too. So we got to get back to work. Thanks for watching. You got any questions? Drop a comment down below. Like, share, and subscribe. See you guys later.